Hello everybody. Uh, now we'll look at section 3.5, absolute max and min. So you notice the term absolute instead of local max and min as we saw in, in section 3.4. The difference in local and absolute is this. When they say absolute maximum or absolute minimum, they mean absolutely the highest point on the entire graph or absolutely the lowest point on the entire graph. Now your questions, you'll be given an interval. So if you look at questions one and two here, notice they've given you this interval uh, zero to nine. Okay, so what that means is we only care about looking between the x values of zero and nine on the graph. So anything that happens to the left of zero, we don't care about anything that happens to the right of nine we don't care about. Absolute extrema can occur at the same place that local extrema occurred. If you remember local extrema occurred at critical points in section 3-4. So we're gonna have to get critical points here just like we did in 3-4. However, absolute extrema also have the possibility of occurring at these endpoints. So what is the endpoints? The endpoints are the x values for the intervals here. So like the left endpoint is 0 and the right endpoint is 9 um, for these particular questions. So um, the first thing we need to do is get our derivative like we would have in 3, 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. The derivative of 4x squared will be 8x and the derivative of negative 16x will be negative 16. We got critical values by setting that equal to 0 and solving for x. So let's do that here. So we've got x equal 2. So 2 is a critical value. The endpoints are 0 and 9. The nice thing about absolute extrema is you don't have to do a sign chart because all we've got to do is look at y values. So what we'll do is we'll take the x value we have here as well as the x values that they mention uh, in the interval, 0 and 9, and plug all of them into the original function. So let's plug in 0, let's plug in 9, and the critical value down here too. Okay, so let's calculate each of those. 4 times 0 squared minus 16 times 0 is going to equal 0. 4 times 9 squared minus 16 times 9 let um, me plug that in. That's going to be 180. And if we plug in 2, 4 times 2 squared minus 16 times 2, that's going to be negative 16. <clears throat> All right, so you've calculated y values here. you got a 0. 180 and a negative 16. The highest y value out of these is 180. So this is the absolute max. The lowest y value is negative 16. So it's the absolute min. Now if you look at how the questions are formatted here, notice we're only asking for the x values and these answers. Make sure you pay attention to the question. Sometimes they ask for the absolute max, sometimes they ask for the absolute min. And number one, they're asking right there for the maximum. So that's going to be 180. The x value you plugged in to get that was 9. So that x value is 9. In number two, they're asking for the minimum. 
Well, our lowest value was negative 16, so you plugged in 2 to get that. So we'll have an x value of 2 right there. So in essence, I'm asking you for the location of the absolute max and min. This is going to be our basic process for everything in this section. Okay, let's go ahead and look at um, another one. Okay. So we got a little bit bigger function here. It's cubic instead of, instead of quadratic, but it's not going to change anything. Uh, so we'll do the same process. Okay, so go ahead and get your derivative f prime of x is going to be uh, negative 4x cubed will become negative 12x squared negative 54x will be negative 108x to the first and root of negative 216x will be negative 216 again we're going to set that equal 0 and solve for x um, notice you can factor out a negative 12 here that's going to leave you what x squared plus uh, 9x plus uh, let's see how many times is 216 divided by 12 it's 18 plus 18 okay x squared plus 9x plus 18 will factor So we need numbers that add to 9 and multiply uh, to 18. So it's got to be 6 and 3. Okay, zero product property. So if we go ahead and break this apart, 0 equal negative 12, 0 equal x plus 6, and 0 equal x plus 3. Uh, we don't get anything from 0 equal negative 12. For 0 equal x plus 6, x will be negative 6. And for 0 equal x plus 3, x will be excuse me, negative 3. Okay, so we have two critical values this time. Uh, negative 6 and negative 3. All right, if you look at your intervals up here, negative 6 uh, is in the interval um, as well as negative 3 so we're gonna plug in negative 8 we're gonna plug in 2 that's the endpoints we're also gonna plug in negative 6 and negative 3 So I'm going to get my calculator here and plug this in. All right, if I plug in negative 8, I get 320. If I plug in 2, I get negative 680. If I plug in negative 6, I get 216. And if I plug in negative 3, I get 270. Okay, so do your comparison now. Your um, highest y value is going to be 320 up here. So that's where your absolute max is. Your lowest y value is going to be the only negative one we have here. Negative 680, so that's going to be our absolute min okay so the absolute max occurs when x is negative 8 and our absolute min occurs when x is 2 all right so again just like the previous question except uh, you ended up with two critical values here instead of just one like we had um, in the last problem
Okay. After that, we have some word problems. Um, so number five is the simpler of the two. We'll get to the, the more complicated one, number six, uh, in a few minutes. <clears throat> if you look at number five, the weekly revenue from the sale of X units of a service is given by a revenue function, 180X minus 6X squared in thousands of dollars, where X is between zero and 25. How many units should be sold to maximize the revenue? So a couple things here. Number one, when they say maximize, that means you're looking for the absolute max. So we're not looking for the min in this case, just the max. Um, the other thing, the way they give the interval here is in inequality notation. This is the same thing in the other problems as saying 0 to 25. So in other words, that's your endpoints. And if you look at that now, it looks just like the other problems. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. Derivative. Derivative of 180x is 180. The derivative of negative 6x squared is negative 12x. Okay, set that equal to 0. And solve for x. Okay, 180 over 12 is going to be 15. So 15 is our critical value. Okay, again, you have to plug in your endpoints 0 and 25, as well as your critical value 15, and calculate the y values for each one. So here's our function right there. Okay, so let's plug those in. If we plug in zero, simple enough, we're going to get zero. Um, if I plug in 25, I'm going to get 750. And if I plug in 15, I'm going to get 1,350. Again, remember, we're only looking for the max, so that's going to be down here uh, when x is 15. So they need to sell 15 units to maximize their revenue. All right, so again, it looked a little different. Um, it's a revenue function instead of just a generic f of x function. But we did the same thing. Okay. Only difference here, they were just ask, asking for the max uh, and not the max and the min. All right, and then just, uh, just one more, and this is the, the most complicated question, and it's not really the, because of the process we just learned. It's uh, going back and remembering um, what we learned about business functions back in uh, section 1.8. Okay, so if we look at this, uh, the weekly revenue from the production and sale of X units of coal is given by a revenue function 294X minus X squared in thousands of dollars. Cost function is given by uh, a cost function 2X squared plus 228X plus 1 in thousands of dollars. Find the number of units of coal that are to be produced to maximize the profit. All right, so if we look at this, um, keep in mind here, they're giving us revenue, they're giving us cost, but they're asking about profit. Okay, so remember, profit equals revenue minus cost. In other words, you've got to create the profit function before you uh, determine the maximum or, or minimum. Okay. So we can do that. Uh, so P of X will be the revenue function 294X minus X squared 
minus the cost function, make sure you're using parentheses here, it's minus the whole thing, 2x squared plus 228x plus 1. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. So negative x squared minus 2x squared is negative 3x squared. Um, and I lost my x right there. Okay, 294x, distribute your negative, minus 228x um, would be uh, 66x. And then distribute your negative over here for minus 1. All right, so this is our profit function. Once you get to this point, now it's just like the other questions. Okay, You just had to create the function first. So they gave you revenue, they gave you cost, you had to change those into profit with the formula profit equal revenue minus cost. Okay, so let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, we need a derivative now. So P prime of X is going to be negative 6x plus 66. Set that equal to 0. And we can solve for x. Sixty-six over six is eleven, so eleven is our critical value. Okay, they gave us an interval zero to thirty here. Okay, so when we go to plug in, we need to plug into the profit function because that's what they're asking about. Plug in your endpoints as well as the critical value that you found. Okay, um, so let's plug them in here. Um, if we plug in 0 into the profit function, negative 3 times 0 squared plus 66 times 0, all that would be 0, minus 1 is going to be negative 1. Okay, if we plug in 30, we get negative 721. And if we plug in 11, we get 362. All right, so again, remember what you're looking for. It said maximize here, so we want the absolute max. So our highest value is, is 362, absolute max. Okay. X is 11 in that case, so we need to sell or produce, excuse me, 11 units to maximize the profit. See you next time.